The DeLonghi ECP series is one of the best selling espresso machines on the market. And so I thought it would be interesting today to take this one apart and uh, see what it's made out of, what it looks like inside. And really for two reasons. One is because this is a European model and on the switch here on the side, it turns off after 10 minutes. So I wonder if there's anything that can be done about that. And number two, for some reason, on the European website, DeLonghi calls this a thermal block machine. And I know it's a boiler or I think it's a boiler. So let's open it up and just take a look. This video might also be helpful for you if you need to dismantle your machine to, for example, put on a different steam wand or to fix something like the pump or the overpressure valve. So let's just take a look how to take this machine apart. First things first, of course, make sure your machine is unplugged, make sure that it is cooled down and not under pressure. That should be obvious. And as a disclaimer, this video is for entertainment only. You are responsible for your own safety and for the proper functioning of your machine. Then we're just going to remove uh, all the accessories. So take the, the water tank. Take the drip tray out. I know on DeLonghi you can just remove the knobs like this. It's pretty simple. It's just on there with this spring like that. Very nice. This knob should also just pull right off the front. You might need a prying tool to get it all the way off. There, we've got that. Now I would recommend as another tip to always take pictures while you're taking things apart, you know, just take your cell phone and take some pictures so that you know where stuff belongs. And ideally use a towel so that the parts stay where they belong and don't just scatter off the table. So I'm going to take this towel right here, put those knobs on there. I would like to take off this display panel here. Looks like there are two Phillips screws here. One, two, take my nice Milwaukee screwdriver here. Got two more screws here in the front as well. I'm going to try to remove those. All right, I'm, I'm a little stumped as to how to get this panel off for now. Let's move on to the bottom. So DeLonghi has got these safety screws on the bottom. It's got, it's like a star pattern with a, a knob in the middle. And I'm just going to unscrew the bottom and take a look. If you can't get down there deep enough with your, looks like that. If you can't get down deep enough with this bit, then you can just use a bladed screwdriver like that one. That works as well. You just have to go in between the knob in the middle and the outsides. Now it should be coming loose. Nice. Okay. That's the bottom. And in here you can see we've got the two lines and this is the switch right here that turns the machine on. And I wonder, if there's anything that can be done about that switch so that the machine doesn't turn off after 10 minutes. I mean, there's various resistors in there, a couple of capacitors, there's a small chip. Not sure what this is, the, the yellow thing. And I'm guessing the white thing is a relay to turn on power to the, to the heater. But unfortunately, I don't see as of yet a way to adjust that 10 minute automatic turn off probably a parameter on that chip right there. So I don't think we're going to solve that mystery just right now. So I'm guessing that this right here is just a mechanical switch that just puts a momentary connection between the two wires. I'm going to take my multimeter here and just put it to continuity. And that way when these two things touch it makes a beep. So I'm guessing what's going to happen is that when you've hit this button, there's just continuity in between. Yeah. That's just a mechanical switch, which means we would have, uh, have to adjust something on the board to not allow that to, to go off after 10 minutes. Or maybe if you just keep the continuity the whole time, then you might also be good to go. But I think that does not uh, go in accordance to the European norms. So, you know, like I said, this is for entertainment purposes only. By the way, guys, if this video has been helpful to you at all, please give it a like. And if you would like to get more information on machines like this one, then consider subscribing to the channel. Let's see if we can get this top part off. I got those two screws out. What do I need to do next? Where is it stuck? 
Oftentimes these things are just held in with clips, but I think that there's a screw in there somewhere yet. Because here it's being held in yet. This is a separate piece here. So can I just take this off? Trying to locate a screw. There's some clips right here too, could that be? Okay, so I got that part off. Still seems like it's being held on somewhere. How am I gonna get this top part off? All right, part two, here we go. So after watching a YouTube video, I realized all I have to do is pop this part out up here. There's a couple of clips, one here, one here, and this needs to be pried up and out of the way. And I don't like doing that with metal so much because I don't wanna, I obviously don't want to scratch anything. So if you've got a different tool, like a plastic one, I would suggest you use that. But now I've got this pried up and out of the way. Lo and behold, here you can see the boiler, which is cool. It's an actual boiler. We're gonna take a closer look in just a moment here. Let's get the, the top part of the casing off. This is fun. I get a kick out of taking stuff apart. And if you ever get stuck, just look at YouTube. That's what I do. It's part of the reason why I started this channel in the first place, is because it's fun to share what you know. And if I don't know, somebody else probably does. All right, here we go. Very nice. I could have probably left the selector switch connected, but that's okay, let's just set this off to the side. Here you, you see you've got two indicator lights, uh, the, the red one for heating, and I believe the white one is just on. So that's, oops. And what do we see in here? That's the interesting part. Okay, we've got some cable ties on here, so visibility is not perfect, but let's just do our best. Um, this is the overpressure valve, and it's going up here around the top of the boiler and into the boiler. And the connection is held on with a brass fitting and with this clip here, this metal clip. And here you can see this is how the steam one is attached. So that's pretty, pretty accessible at this point. If you want to switch out the steam wand, at this point all you have to do is remove these bolts to get the boiler out of the way. And once you remove the boiler, then you should have access to this little ball joint here where the steam wand is mounted. And then you can remove the steam wand and put in a new one. Maybe we'll do that in a future video. Let me know if you would be interested. The, the main thing that I wanted to see today is what exactly is the heating element? And yes, it is a little stainless steel boiler. Let's see if we can get the, the boiler out of there. Boiler screw. Boiler screw. You can see they're different lengths, so we've got to keep track of what goes where. Two long ones in the back and two short ones in the front. Ah, oh, there's one more screw right there. A long one by the one. So now, I can take that sucker right up out of there. Uh huh. There's my needle nose. Let's just detach it up here. Get that over the hump. Sometimes these are hard to get off. Uh, that one was easy, but just to have a little patience, you may have to pry it like so with a little screwdriver. Probably have to undo these lines here and there's still a little water in there. So that's, that's not ideal. That one goes on the right, the clear one. That one goes on the left. That's important because one of these is for, for feeding the boiler and the other one is, is for coming off the overpressure valve. So now I should be able to just pull it up and out of there. Yeah, but I still got some wires attached, right? Well, I've gone this far, no turning back now. Okay. Very interesting. Okay, what have we got here? Okay, so what we're looking at now, we've got the entire machine exposed. Let's just go through the circuit. Let's do it that way. Let's go through the water circuit. So what you have is 
this is attached to the water tank, right? So the water gets sucked up from the pump here. And on top of the pump, there is this overpressure valve mounted. So this is just a coupling here and mounted 90 degrees. On top of that is the OPV or overpressure valve. DeLonghi also calls this an anti-drip valve or safety valve. Really what it does is if it would fail, it would put the water here back into the tank. Normally, in the normal case, the water does not go back into the tank, but if this is broken, you will start to see bubbles coming up in the tank. So that's what this is for here. It's basically a safety valve. And then the water that makes it through here is probably gonna be pressurized up to, let's say a very maximum of 11 bar. But you know, that depends on the pressure that it's being confronted with here at the bottom of the brew group. So here you see the brew group Actually, it looks nice. You know, this, this is all metal. I'm guessing that this is probably brass. It's most likely like a, a, a chromed brass or something. But yeah, it's pretty heavy duty. And on top of it sits the stainless steel boiler. Anyway, what I was saying is this pressurized water is coming up into here and it's filling the boiler. At that point, the pressure is low. Once the boiler is full, then it tries to exit here out of the brew group. And even there, there is some pressure because Inside, there we go. It's just kind of sucked onto there. So this right here is the shower screen. And underneath the shower screen, there is another valve. So it's a spring valve. And the pressure within the boiler has got to be enough to overcome the spring pressure here. So this is the little spring valve that we're working with here. All right, at this point, the water would just empty out of the boiler if you didn't have that valve. So we need that. And the, the pressure inside the boiler is first of all got to overcome this. And when it overcomes that pressure, then it's got to overcome the pressure of the coffee puck that's in the portafilter. And so that's where you're going to be anywhere between, let's say, five bar if you didn't pack a very finely ground uh, coffee puck or up to 11 bar if you pack it too tight. The maximum, however, that I've measured in this machine is 11 bar. This right here is the valve that opens up the, the valve. Oh, 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 that's interesting. <laughs> this opens up the valve on the side for hot water or for steam. I think it just, it just opened up a, a path. There must have been a vacuum in here before and that's why the water hadn't poured out yet. But yeah, it must have opened up a path for the water to flow out. Let's just let that water out one time. Okay, I guess that's it. I think the other interesting thing to do today would be to open up the boiler. Let's just have a look inside, see what it looks like. Wouldn't that be cool? Let's do it. Hopefully I can get this thing back together. Oh, it's not 10. What is it, eight? Eight millimeters. Okay nut and bolt oh here comes more water oh go all right but i think the mess is going to be worth it because now look at that oh it's not even full scale huh that looks cool. Oh no, here's scale. Oh my gosh, look at that. What the heck is that? There's like, <laughs> there's like sand in there. Are you kidding me, dude? Wow. Oh, okay, that's the brew group right there. That's crazy. Right there, you can see that there's, it looks like sand in there. What the heck? I descaled this recently, and, and you can see there's actually no scale here on, on the elements, but in the bottom there's like this sand stuff. Must be mineral deposits. That is weird. So we've got that. Here we, hopefully I get it back in there, right? Should really mark stuff. So let's just mark this. This right here is the brew group. It's actually light. It's not brass like I was thinking. This has got to be aluminum because it feels very light. There right there is what uh, the lock-in part of the brew group looks like. Very cool. And this right here is the bottom part of the boiler. Yeah, with that sand in it. And this is uh, the bottom part of the brew group where your porta filter goes. But of course, you've got this valve that goes in there. The valve gets closed in like that. 
and then you've got the shower screen. It goes on top just like that, and then your water filter comes on and gets screwed in. Pretty cool to see it. So, as I said, I descaled this, but it's in dire need of some more cleaning. I'm gonna clean this out. And this right here is the heating element. That's very, very interesting. On the back of the machine, it says it's got, uh, or on the bottom, 1100 watts, which is about the same as the Laylit Grace that I've been looking at. And that has 1050 watts. And the Laylit Grace has a 250 milliliter boiler. This has only got a, I'm guessing, 150 milliliter boiler. So we got this little cup here, and then we got the top part, but the top part can't fit very much water in it. I don't think so. Because you got this heating element here taking up most of the space. So I went ahead and I, I cleaned the boiler out because it was gross. Also this gasket, look how big that gasket is. The gasket was pretty gross too and, and so was this part. I still have a little cleaning to do. But what I want to do here is just see how much this holds. So I've got this container filled up with 150 milliliters of water. It's about six ounces. And uh, that seems to be just what it takes. Yep. So, 150 milliliter boiler. I hope that this video was helpful for you guys, and if so, please give it a like, check out my other videos. If you like what you see, subscribe to the channel, it's totally free, and write, write your questions down. If you got questions about this dismantling or anything else, let me know. Till next time, I say happy coffee drinking, and happy machine dismantling. Bye now.